Peace and blessings, peace and blessings. What's up, you guys? Today I'm going to go over the Ten Commandments, Exodus chapter 20. I'm going to read the whole chapter because it's very interesting. Exodus chapter 20. From 1 to, I think, 26. Yeah, 1 to 26. Exodus, Exodus chapter 20 from 1 to 26. Let's go. And God spoke and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God is saying he is the God that take us out of certain bondages, certain snares. He's the one that help us. And the least we could do is serve him the right way. And be kind to one another. So hopefully by us being kind to one another, we could shed light in dark places. So with that being said... Let's go, verse four. Thou shall not make any, thou shall not make unto thee any graven images, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. So God don't like images. No type of image. Anything you put before God could be an image, including us. Because we was made in the image of God. Or God's. Verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For though the Lord... Okay, let me read 4 again. So basically God is saying we shouldn't never worship anything or put anything before him he's number one and everything else should fall in place thou shall not make any unto thee any graven images or any like likeliness likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or in the earth beneath or in or in the water underneath the earth thou shall not bow thy, thou shall not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God see I told a female this one time to I tell her I said God is a jealous God you know but it's it's a certain way it's not jealousy as in what we know as jealousy God is just like you know like put me first don't try to cause I you know, he's he's the number one. He's the only one that really care about us. That's a God of love. And he, he's saying, be faithful. Put me first. Because he is the God of love, but he could be. He's also the God of vengeance, of wrath. Don't do what you know you shouldn't do. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to, to them, nor serve them for I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto their third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not Take the name of the Lord thy God, blessed be his name, in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guilty less that take it his name in vain. So God saying, do not use his name in vain, cause he won't he won't judge you as guilty less. He'll judge you as guilty. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the seventh day, which is Saturday, 
to keep it holy because Sunday is the first day of the week. They just don't make you know that. They try to, you know, reverse the words and stuff. I mean, any, as you could worship God on every day, but God said, remember this day to keep it holy. For six days thou shalt thou labor and do all thy works. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And it thou shalt not do any work, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Verse 18, and all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountains smoke. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. So while God was saying these things, the earth was trembling, thunder and lightning was going on. The noise of trumpets, the mountain start to smoke, you know, the mountain of the volcano and you know. So the people them, they kind of like fall back a little bit because it's scary in a real life, it ain't no movie. All this was happening right in front of them. And then, and they said unto Moses, speak though with us and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. So you see the people them have sense. They know say God I don't know joke. No, no joke thing, you know. So they, they, they request, they said, that's why, that's what made people kind of wanted a king and thing to rule over them, because they was afraid of God. They know who God is, you know, but they just afraid of God. So they, they rather trust man. But man can lead us astray. So that's why it's good to to build your own relationship with God. 
so verse 19 it said and they said unto Moses speak thou with us and we will hear but let not God speak to us lest we die Moses said unto the people fear not for God is come to prove you so Moses tell them fear not for God has come to prove you that his fear may be before your faces that You sin not. So God saying, like God said to Moses, fear not for God is come to prove you and that his fear may be before your faces that you will sin not. So all them people that believe in the aliens and them something there, they don't realize that God is even more powerful than what you call an alien. Stay there. But verse 21. And then, And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven ye shall not make with me gods of silver neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold so the same thing God tell them not to do I see them thing them God do when Moses went up in the mountains 40 days and 40 nights to um, pray and stuff. They, they end up doing the same thing after seeing God rot so much and after seeing how serious God was, they still end up going to make golden calf or bull and that's where all this bale stuff come from, from the ancient days. And you see how they they still got to do that after hearing, seeing it for yourself. And seeing God, a little bit, a little taste of God rot. It wasn't even his rot. It was just a taste of God presence in their face, telling them not to do these things. And they still went and did these things. So people stubborn, you know, they don't learn. And the same bill that them worship can't help them because the same bill <laughs> you see in the days of Elijah when when Elijah was calling down fire from heaven and a test for them God and for them God not even answer because you know why for them God no say or that God of Jacob Jesus the God of Most High Almighty God. Get father, the God of Abraham, that's the real God. So everything else is little to him. Like it's like little kids. God showed them, and even with Elijah, he said, "Maybe your God is asleep, or maybe your God is on vacation. Call to your God." Same thing, Elijah test them so much to the point where. Every time they bring army before him, fire come down and devour the army to the point where the last one when he said when I lost one of the last one them when he come with the army and they beg Elijah, please don't call down heaven. Don't call on fire upon us because I believe and them didn't wanna get devoured because they know God is a real God is real and well. So you play with fire, you know what, you see it, fire burn, so.
Let's go on. Verse 23. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me. So God wants to make an altar from the earth. And shall sacrifice therefore burnt offerings and peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen. This was in the Old Testament. Nowadays, God rather your obedience over these things. But it just shows us how we graduated from the Old Testament. Like certain ways, traditional ways, how we used to make sacrifices. So God said, an altar of earth an altar of earth thou shalt make unto me and shalt sacrifice thy burnt offerings thy and thy peace offering thy sheep and thine oxen in all places where i record my name i will come unto thee and i will bless thee and if thou will make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hen stone. So God is saying, if you make him an altar, thou shalt not build it of hen stone. God don't want no hen stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. So God don't want no stone that's been polluted. Cause he said, if thou and if thou lift up, he said, an altar of the earth thou shalt make unto me, and shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offering, thy sheep and thine oxen, in all places where I record my name. I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone. So an altar of stone is cool, because Abraham made an altar of stone. But it's, it depends on what stone you use, because God don't want no. He said, thou shall not build it in hen stone. H-E-W-N. Hen, hen stone. Handstone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shalt thou go up by step unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. So God, you see, verse 26 is serious in you know, verse 25 and 26. Because God warned us himself. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it in hen stone. And thou shalt not build it of hen stone. For if thou lift up thy stool upon it, thou hast polluted it. So if you if you if you lift up your tool upon it, you polluted it. Neither shall thou go up by steps unto the altar. So you neither should approach it. You shouldn't walk up the step of the altar that you built for God. That thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. So that's a very powerful thing. And this is the Ten Commandments <coughs> that, <coughs> excuse me, that, <coughs> that man is trying to change again. Man trying to tamper with God's word. So you see, all these things he warned them. See, when he warned them, when Moses left them to go pray and fast and stuff in the mountains, you know, people them start make bail, they take off all the jewelry and stuff. Before them give thanks to them, they're in a bondage no more. You see, we have time to 
go worship something that ain't care about you. If it was up to the devil, they would not have left. They would have still been in bondage. But you see, it's just the mercy of God. Even though God is so powerful and magnificent, he's still gentle with us. And we don't see that. Like, we just... If anybody is spoiled brats, that's all of us. Everybody is a spoiled brat. Unless they understand these things. And they try it. Because narrow is the way and it's not easy to be good. It's the hardest thing you could ever do. Anybody could be a little knucklehead. It's nothing. It don't take no effort to do. Try doing the right thing and tell me how easy that is. It's not easy at all. <clears throat> That's why props is due. People got to respect goodness and mercy and, and stop getting in its way because you don't want the real rot. Why you think his rot is not rot? When the real rot of God start to pour. Remember God said it in his word from generations to the second, to the third, to the fourth, to even, I think he said, yeah, to the fourth generation that of them that hate me. So one to four. So if they could hate God, and we're for God, you know, them not going to like we either. So it's very clear. That's why I always pray for strength and strength to deal with everything. Because it's not an easy road. So bad enough, you got to deal with your own issues in life. And then you got to deal with everything else that, <laughs> that happened to be in your way or happened to any other task that you have to go through. Now look at Job and Joseph and them. They went through a lot. But I don't think nobody went through what Jesus went through. Jesus went through the toughest. You see? And it's all for us. Because he love us so much. And the beautiful thing about God is God not care too much about your past. You know? As long as your heart have some type of leverage and and you can't change. God won't turn his back on you. So that's a beautiful and magnificent God. And that's also a God that you don't want to take his kindness for weakness. Because this is not a joke. God said it. I am a jealous God. And he mean it. <clears throat> you could take it however you want to take it. But God said it. And it's something to take his word seriously. And I'm working on me. I'm not just talking like I'm all perfect. I'm not perfect. But I'm working on me. In due time, I will get closer and closer. <clears throat> but none of us is perfect. Not even the prophets. The only perfect man was Jesus. And I think Elijah was close to it and Enoch and them. But everybody else, we got a lot of work to do, brothers and sisters. So hopefully you understand these words that are coming from the Bible that I speak from my, my lips. And I pray it's a blessing to you and yours. God bless you guys. Subscribe, share, like. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about this verse. And it's a very ancient verse. And it's from the Old Testament. So remember, like I said, nowadays God don't really care about sacrifice. The only sacrifice God care about right now is your obedience to his word. And you doing his will. The father's business. So I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. God bless. Peace.